Welcome to episode 8 of Relics of Or. I'm your host, Shongaku. Actually, season 3, episode 8. And Relics of Or is a show about Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2, and the Guild Wars community. Mostly Guild Wars 2, obviously, right now, but we do Bunny Trail, as we have established before. This week, I am joined by my co-host, my typical co-host. First of all, editor-in-chief of Relics of War, Kate. You've been promoted. Hey. How are you go doing this week? I'm doing well. I'm enjoying the new patch and generally enjoying life. It's summer. It's wonderful. Nice. I'm also joined by Evie, who is not an editor or anything, but he knows a lot about Guild Wars 2, so we I keep know. him around. And we also have special guest guests this week, Steve from The Orator. Welcome, Steve. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. Sweet. So, let's go to the main screen then. Nice 10 second delay for that. So, what has everyone been up to in... Uh... Uh, actually, no. I should follow my show notes. Cough. Super professional. So, Steve, you are from theorator.com. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do in the uh, Guild Wars community and just in gaming communities in general? Uh, ooh, I'll give you the short version of that. Uh, not that my gaming past is that much to talk about anyways, but uh, I've played all my life, uh, as probably most people that would listen to the podcast would, most are video game fans, but uh, as far as in gaming communities, uh started uh, blogging for a guild that I was in back in Warhammer Online, uh, and then when that guild kind of uh, flopped, I joined another group, and that group happened to, to uh, run a podcast called Cotcast for Warhammer Online. Uh, then after that, uh, we kind of were getting tired of playing Warhammer Online, and went on to do a multi-gaming podcast called Multiplaying. Uh, it's over at multiplaying.net. Uh, we started that back up recently. Uh, and because I've been playing a lot of Guild Wars 2 still since the game, ever since the game came out, uh, I started up a blog. I don't know if you want to call it a blog. Uh, Orator.com with two R's. Or actually, three, technically. Uh, and it's basically a faux newspaper for... Guild Wars 2. Um, but yeah, that's about it. What inspired it what inspired the creation of the Orator? Um I would say because when we did multiplaying, uh when we did that and, and I used to write about multiple games, but it's hard to blog about lots of different games when there's so many other way better people that write about that and actually get paid for it. I love writing about games just as a hobby. Uh, I just never wanted. I've never really desired to do it for money because I I see how much like hardship and work it is to to actually get to that point to be really really good. And when I'm trying to support a family, I have two kids and a wife. Uh, uh, trying to support them, I, I I don't see that working out well for me. I don't think my wife would understand me uh, dropping what I do to uh, write game for games for a living. So uh, I just kind of do it as a hobby. And uh, But the thing is, is that when I was doing it for lots of different games, I never wanted to be serious about it. But when you're not too serious about that, it seemed like nobody really wanted to pay any attention to what you said. Um, so, and mix that with the feeling that I always had that uh, writing for a single game, like especially an MMO, you can get way deeper down the detail path you can get. You can kind of go down the rabbit hole a lot more with it. Uh, and I wanted to start around Christmas time, uh, around the, right, the, right at the time of the uh, Winter's Day stuff in Guild Wars 2 uh, is when I started up the blog or newspaper, however you want to refer to it. And I kind of just did it on a whim. Like, okay, what would a fake, like, take a daily show or the onion spin on reporting for uh, for the world of Guild Wars 2, trying my hardest to not break the fourth wall on it and see how that would go. And uh, people seem to uh, have taken to it, so I appreciate everyone who reads. It is fantastic. I enjoy just popping over. I, I absolutely enjoyed the uh, 
discussion on mesmers and their magic recently and their dislike of the color they're not necessarily their love of the color purple i thought that was hilarious it yeah. was fantastic and i have uh probably have as much fun doing the ads the uh, fake ads on the side as i do the uh, writing i probably put more ads on there but uh I, th I don't want to fill it up too much with that. I like having the uh, the, the, the smattering of ads. So. Yeah, I do like uh, I like Kralkatork Long Care. That was amazing as well. Yes. It just there is there is tiny text on that, isn't there? Yeah. I have not read there that is. yet. You can't. Oh. It actually says there's not there's no possible way that you can read this text. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then I think I, if I remember correctly, I, the rest of it reads about how my day went. <laughs> Now I'm gonna try and blow it up bigger just to see. No, you can't. I, I tried. Can't. It. It's the, the <laughs> smallest possible font that I could get, and I tried blowing it up. I was like, "Yeah, you can't read that so good because it was a weird day." <laughs> That's awesome. So, what have you been doing in Guild Wars Two of late, then, Steve? Um. Well, when I came back, uh, I I should say that uh, I was I had played very heavily since launch. Uh, I back quick backstory as far as uh, Guild Wars One goes. I didn't. I had played Guild Wars One. I had every expansion, but I never played it for more than like a month at a time. It was something that I, I like enjoyed at, at, in small spurts, but never really got too deep into it until the Hall of Monument stuff, which was probably where a lot of people came back to the game and started diving in. Um, but for some reason, the Hall of Monument stuff actually got me way more into the game than I expected. I, I started really enjoying just the lore and the backstory of the game more than I expected and more than I ever did previously. Um, but I played then, and I played Guild Wars 2 since launch, and then I took about like a about a two-month break, and about a month ago came back, and that's when I started the order back up. Um, but since the inception of Guild Wars 2... I knew, uh, especially because I had played some of Guild Wars One, I knew I wanted to play a Norn, and I knew I wanted to be a Ranger. That was like I, I that was me. That's exactly what I wanted to be. I didn't care how much the class sucked, uh, whether it did or not. I actually do do still enjoy the class. Uh, so that's basically all I play as a Ranger. Until this week, I started playing a Mesmer, and uh, have really been enjoying that lately. So I don't. Nice. I kind of hope it doesn't like completely take me away from the Ranger because I have all my time invested in him. But I do really enjoy the change. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about Guild Wars 2 is it is kind of one of those games that's about having a few a few alts. I mean, you might... Yeah. You, you could end up like Kate, who has 37 alts. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. She's working on it, though. She's already got she one, of one, of class, one of each class. One of each profession up at 80, <clears throat> so... Well, that's cool. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I like the Ranger. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm. Oh, I'm just about to say I am definitely seeing the uh, the the need for the alts. I think because the reason that I took the couple months off of the game is because I definitely burn out of playing just the one class. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I wasn't even going for legendaries. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's like. Do you want to burn out? Do you want to go for legend? Yeah, that gets exciting. <laughs> How about you, Kate? You, uh, what have you been up to? I've been actually. I hit. 80 on all my professions, all eight of them. So I've now been revisiting old ones that I liked but haven't necessarily spent a whole lot of time with. Particularly Engineer, Ranger, and Mesmer, who hasn't been played for a long time. Which is sad because I like her. She just hasn't been played for a long time. Um, and I'm also back to working on my Legendary now that I have some more free time. I'm working towards Bolt, and i am got about half my charged Lodestones and half my T6 mats and I'm still a long ways off, though. <laughs> I'm getting there. Slowly but surely. You'll get there eventually. I mean, a lot of people have have a few legendaries. Apparently, someone in our guild has, what, like three now? Four. Four? Four. Three. Okay. He's about to finish Sunrise, which is his third. After wow. doing Bifrost and the Torch. Oh, I thought he had three. Torch. He was about to finish Sunrise. Never mind. Yep. So three. That, that's, just, that's just wrong. Evie, what have you been up to? Um, other than getting half of my achievements in one day, because, you know, I'm awesome. Uh, <laughs> Wait, half of your achievements in one day? What does that mean? I've done half of the achievements for the new content. Oh, okay. 
I was gonna say, wow, you've gotten half of the achievements in one day for <laughs> all of them? <laughs> nah, He's hardcore. <laughs> I was like, what have you been... I was just oh. like, these rewards, I must have them. <laughs> I must have them all. Which we, uh, I, that will be interesting to find out about, because I haven't actually messed with the UI yet. But please continue. Uh, other than that, I am just got my Mesmer to 80. Got a full set of exotics yesterday and today. And I'm enjoying it greatly compared to the thief that died all the time. And That's because they're a it. thief. Wait, your Mesmer wasn't 80? Hmm? Your Mesmer was not 80? Not until like this week. Oh, oh! It was your elemental. Wait, who are you taking into Aetherblade Retreat with us? My LA. Okay. It's like, how is he wearing exotic gear? It. Okay, that makes more sense. I, I, I didn't. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember seeing lots of purple. What was? Anyways, there we go. I pay a lot of attention to other people. I'm just a necromancer, so I'm like, I'm putting conditions. Who cares what everyone else is doing? And then people are like, you're not doing as much damage as a... Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling. So, I'm, I have been alt, you know, typical thing. And uh, totally enjoying Aetherblade Retreat when I get the chance to do that. I took a few uh, people who have not done a lot of in-game content yet through. And it was a lot of fun. Hunter and I took uh, two, new, two guildies through who are relatively new at in-game stuff. And it was that was quite entertaining. One of them was running around in... He had an exotic set but he, all of his trinkets were green. All of them. <laughs> and he'd been running dungeons and aura and stuff, and being competent, but it was kind of hilarious. And then and then, they, then we gave him a full set of, like, berserker gear. Actually, by we, I mean Triv and Israfel were amazing and gave him that. And he's like, oh my goodness, I'm dealing damage as a power berserker mesmer. And it was fa it's pretty hilarious. So every time he does something like get a 8k crit, He's like, ah, oh, damage! It's fantastic. So we're having a lot of fun running him through content now. But no one actually came to listen to me talk about what I'm doing in-game. What they came to hear about was, of course, the living story in Bizarre of the Four Winds, which came out today. So, Spirit, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Sanctum Sprint, since you were the only one who has actually had a chance to do it. Okay, I'm really bad at the skills because I didn't learn them. But essentially, it's Mario Kart, and you have the three um, basic skills. Your sun, like, sprint forward, your wind leap, your lightning targeted leap. Um, and then you get additional skills, kind of like power-ups from Mario Kart. There's false skills. There's, yeah, traps. I don't remember. There, and you run an obstacle course. It reminds it's me of Mario Kart, shell, but with there? ninjas. I can't remember. I did it once, like, quickly because I was like, I need to experience this quick! Blue <laughs> Shell. What did the Blue Shell do in Mario Kart again? It uh, zoomed straight to the front and ended all your hopes and dreams. Yep. Exactly. Big explosion uh, to the person in first place. Oh, wow. That's hardcore. I, I clearly did not play enough Mario Kart as a child. No, you didn't. So, I lost many how many... to that game. <laughs> It's both amazing and sad. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so how many play? How many characters are do you uh, race against then? I'm pretty sure it was eight. Maybe it was twelve. Eight. Okay. Cool. It's a decent number. Yeah. So, is there what? Are there any strategies that you saw? You've only done it once, but have people been talking about strategies or anything in there? Like, bring the biggest guy ever. Like, bring a Norn so that you make everyone else unable to tell what's going on in front of them. I wouldn't bring a Norn. I don't know. There, there were small platforms that I was uncomfortable on. I was, I'm gonna fall. I was so scared. There was like little, little tiny planks. There were when we were climbing up around the scavenger hunt and walking along the ship. There was just itsy bitsy little bamboo shoots. I'm gonna make an assumption, uh, and assume that it's not already a thing that's in there, and say that I know exactly what would make that game. 10 times better and more entertaining is that if all of the characters made race car sounds with their mouths as, as yes. they did it. <laughs> so make the sound Aww. that the, the riding broom makes. I don't know if you guys have one, but it sounds like a jet plane when you're like driving the riding broom. Yeah. 
<laughs> nice. Or they should just turn us all into MOAs and just have us our characters scream with how fat, like progressively based on like shriek based on how progressively <laughs> fast you're going. So it's just a higher and higher pitched scream. And actually, so. Steve, what we need to do is we need to get a whole bunch of people together and stream it with us doing that the entire time. Yes. So <laughs> and you have to do shifting sounds. <laughs> so if you fall you like bad you fall shifting, you, you, you actually just straight up start screaming and throw your hands over your head. If, if you miss the jump like... when you land, you have to make crashing sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Make horn sounds as you pass people. And the- <laughs> <laughs> I would have an old time horn too. The nice so thing is, you don't have to do. You don't have to actually stream Guild Wars Two to do that. Just whenever you're playing the game, just do that. I just do so, it when I walk around. Yeah. <laughs> I do it when I'm driving. It drives my brother crazy. Are you making sounds? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, do you have a lot of space on the sidewalk then, Steve, when you walk around? Yeah, because I keep my arms all the way stretched out, too. <laughs> do you have, like, a uh, giant I mean, smile I mean, on your face? Oh. Like, when you're ri- like when people are riding the broom, the Norn have their arms stretched out, and they have that creepy, crazy smile on their face? Yeah. Well, I have a big mustache, so it, it, I always have a smile on my face. <laughs> nice. Also, I agree, Hunter. We definitely need to have Cole do another drinking game based on the Sanctum Sprint. That will happen. So, look forward to that from Relics of Ore. So, that should be pretty interesting. What sorts of rewards do you get for completing the Sanctum Sprint? Is it like I... Dragon Ball at all, where they like give you nothing, or...? I got a handful of blues, because I didn't do very well. But you can get um, rares and... I think even exotics and better from it. I'm not entirely sure on that, so don't Every put me on that. Every 15 races you do, you get a rare bag. Ooh, neat. Nice. Huh. That has a chance at an exotic, I think, so. I believe, do you get a guaranteed rare for second place, or is it just a high chance at a rare? Oh, someone just, well, I don't know. I think you get a higher chance at things as you get higher, but they are also dropping the new back pieces. Oh, that's fantastic. Ooh. I've heard of three of them dropping now. Two people, no, one person in chat got the one person I know got one. one so what we need, to, so what you need to do is actually do that as soon as possible because that's clearly an exploitative level of drop rate. So they're gonna nerf it by tomorrow. So get <laughs> so in there and do the do race. It so you don't get banned. Because no, you, you should don't do it because it's exploiting <laughs> on this show, Eric. <laughs> Shame. Anyways, cool. So that's exciting. Uh, why? It's kind of surprising that this came out right after the MOA racing, which was kind of a disappointment, because people were like, MOA racing, it's like roller beetle racing, and then we're like, oh, oh. Yeah, it was pretty sad. <laughs> so, do you guys I, think that... I, I, loved, I loved roller beetle... Re- no, I can't say that word. Roller beetle. Roller beetle. Roller beetle. Roller beetle. <laughs> Did he say Justin Bieber? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, roller beetle was amazing. Uh... Do you think that we might see them start trying to, I don't know, transfer the the MOA race into an actual race? Nah. No reason and, to. Oh, and Hunter is so right in chat. He says nothing beats Meep. Go the old no. Meep. Meep is Meep, the best. Meep lost me too old. Meep should be <clears throat> drumsticks. Evie, who do you bet on in the MOA race? I can't remember. All I know is I got that achievement and then I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> Walked away. I think I spent five gold trying to get that. (laughs) Did you actually end up getting it? Yes, I did. Who did you bet on? Uh, I kind of just tossed it around between Meep and uh, uh, Mahdi. Oh, Mahdi. Mahdi's like the troll one because he lost so often whenever I was going. But he won me one of the times. Won for me, I should say. So uh, I got great love for Mahdi. Nice. Good work, Maudie. But, yeah. yeah, no one beat... Meep's awesome. The interesting thing about that is when the, when they first launched it, you could get the achievement for it just by doing... just by getting 21 of those tickets, like, for the first two or three days. And then they changed it so you actually had to win three times, and I was sad. Yeah. Oh. Because I had to do it on my alt account. Ugh. 
yeah, it was a bit more rougher. Although I think I actually made like two gold somehow, betting on Meep, so... And then I was done, I was like, I'm out. So, that was fun, and I'm glad that they actually are, did a race. I think that they kind of were established that now they can do races. So, I hope to see that they will expand upon that gameplay style. Is there anywhere else in the world where we might see like a a, lo a city where they would do a race? At the Black Citadel with war machines. Ooh, that'd be a good yes. idea. Yes. Wow, that'd uh, be amazing. Have, like, a tanks thing where you have to shoot the other tank and then it blows they up. They should do like oh, a top down. Yeah, uh, top down combat. Tanks. combat. Yes. Like for Done. Oh, oh so you're looking straight down play that. and and basically world of so what would they call it? World of Char tanks because they've got world of tanks that's an actual game so they should ha like reference that in some way i don't know the char tanks look like hedgehogs to me so they can work that in somehow hedgehogs of flaming doom yes. brought to you by ritlock brimstone what would you call I like hope the he lead endorses it with a commercial in slotted shades what would you name like ritlock's team of doom hedgehogs anyone i don't name is what well, like those tanks, they look like doom hedgehogs, like flaming doom hedgehogs. So what would you name a team of those? Like I'm Ritlock's saying. personal sponsored team. Tank hog. Tank hog. Hamstorm, I don't know. Charred Earth. Hamstorm. Hamstorm. They should have... Because <gasps> it's like a hedgehog and a hog is like a pig and so I... There we go. So Hamstorm should definitely be the name of that. Not because, you know, we're related to a guild named Hamstorm, or it was the classic build of Guild Wars. Are yep. you familiar with the Hamstorm build, Steve? The Hamstorm? Which one? The the original Hamstorm, the one that was in the cover of the Guild Wars 1 box, where they're like, a deadly combination, and it's like, hamstring, <laughs> and like, fire elemental skills, and it was just the worst skill bar ever. Because it had like work. Did the warrior not have enough energy to cast it or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Plus, I think there were two different weapons called out. Like there was a hammer ability and an axe ability on it. It was amazing. Worst skill set ever. So there we go. It should be named Hamstorm. All right. So moving on, the scavenger hunt. Apparently, there is a scavenger hunt in the world. What is it like, Evie? Have you done any of it? I've gotten the achievement for it. Okay. So, Evie, tell us about this achievement. Wait. Seriously? Yeah. You've already found all of the crystals. Well, forty of them. You don't have to find all of them. There's fifty-two, and you only have to find forty. But we've both done that. Yeah. So why don't you tell us we about what what point, is like, this thing? Two hours, maybe? Less. An hour and a half? We're expert platformers, though, clearly. Well, you are the Juzzle Lord in Relics of War. So, Evie, why don't you tell us about what's, what's it like? What do you do? General okay. overview. So, when you go to... Did Evie just lag out? Looks I like think it. so. All right, so Spirit, why don't you tell us about it, and we'll try and get Evie back. Okay, so when you enter the labyrinthine cliffs, there's sky crystals everywhere. Well, at least it seems like they're everywhere. But they're hidden all around the zone, up in the rafters, behind waterfalls, everywhere up on top of things, and you have to use the elemental crystal skills to get to them. There's Your one skill is wind, which increases your jump distance, basically just throws you up in the air. Two is a sprint forward, um, which you can use to, to pass through waterfalls that you can't otherwise pass through. And your three skill is a lightning uh, targeted leap, but you can also switch between, you can zap straight to lightning rods as opposed to using the ground targeting. Okay. And using those skills and combinations of those skills, you travel to places you've never thought you could go in MMO maps to get all these crystals. It's quite fun. Nice. So, Steve, have you done many jumping puzzles at all? Uh, yeah, I actually yeah, relish the jump puzzles. I love them. So, have Especially you read... The holiday ones. The, they are pretty fantastic. Did you complete the uh, Mad King one? Oh, yeah. Nice. 
Is that is that where we set the bar right now for jumping puzzles, Kate? Or has this EV Kate has this set it above now? The current the new stuff. For difficult? Yeah, for difficulty. Or is yeah, yeah, I'd say the 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 clock tower is still probably the hardest one. The the winner's day one I probably completed at least ten times. <laughs> that one was a yeah. that one was like you're just I'm booking through. It was pretty fantastic. The uh, yeah. clock tower took me two hours of swearing, and I made it through Winter's Day on my third try. Uh, I first third. 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 Your first time? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. I don't know. Lag. I blame the internet. <laughs> Whatever. Come at me, bro. Yeah. Speaking of internet, apparently I can stream and be on Skype at the same time. Boom, boom, boom. Wait, were you trying to That's stream it. the episode as well, or are you trying to watch the episode? Watch it. Ah. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, Whatever. Right. Okay. All my right. Neighbors are probably stealing my Wi-Fi. So, how long do you think it's going to take you to finish the uh, achievements, Steve? Um, I don't know. Probably the weekend, I imagine. Uh, with uh, having a couple kids, I only get to play an hour or two a night. So. Yeah, that does that does limit it. It, yeah. it should be interesting to see the jumping like the effects that these new jumping things have on it uh could they uh, use this in other places like other than just this lo specific lore example do you think that they might be able to use this elsewhere i know evie and i had a theory of where we might go in an expansion evie you want to talk about this i can see now i'm lost our theory about like what, what you could do you. you go to Space, the moon. Oh, oh. it's space. <laughs> There's a service space station. I'm okay with I'm that convinced. theory. I'm so, okay with this. When when we zoom out on the map, we're just going at, to a view from a service space station. That's there. No, no, no. It is now canon. <laughs> no, it, it's more appropriate when you have you know the engineer supply crate skill. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you mouse over it, it says the supply crate drops from a certain satellite. <laughs> there you go. So they have to resupply those satellites at some point. So yeah. low gravity situation, they now have it encoded in the game where you can function within and tweak jump distances for low gravity. I actually came up with this idea because I was watching a thing about Wildstar and they're like, oh, you can go to the moon. And... Uh, yeah, apparently Spirit's out. She's gone. She's so excited about this. She's just going to go to the moon. <laughs> She's just like, I'm going to the moon. <clears throat> All right. So, moving on forward. So, how many crystals did you guys actually find on the uh, area? Quartz nodes, sorry. I looted like 25, exactly. No, not How does the... Like so, four. the quartz is a new recipe, It's or it's a new material. How does it work? Evie? Well... There's mining nodes in the new areas, <clears throat> and the supply boxes that you can get for trading old materials or duct tape. What? <laughs> Sorry. The supply boxes that you can get for trading old materials, Zytafi, candy corn, at the Sanctum can be used to go to a place of power which are the skill points that you just kind of commune with and you're just like oh, wow. and once a day you can turn 25 of these basically ore into a charged quartz the charged quartz is then used in crafting recipes much like blood or passion oh. flower so not the regular quartz you don't do anything with not to my knowledge. Hmm. So, with that, I know Spirit was mentioning on Twitter that it seems like the charge quartz actually it makes for a very long period of time to actually get con uh, get stuff built. Why is that, Spirit? What it, what's going on there? You can only so it takes twenty five quartz to become a charged one, and you can only create a charge one charge quartz per day you need it doesn't five. so even if you had like 50 quartz in uh 50 quartz shards in your inventory you could not make 
two, you would only make one and only use 25? Correct. Okay. It takes five of those charged ones to make an insignia, so five per armor piece. If you make an entire celestial set of armor, that's 30 days for that armor set, purely based on the time gating of the silly charged crystal things. What is celestial armor, then? What's, what stat combo is celestial? It's all stats. So power, precision, toughness, vitality, magic find, crit damage, everything is on there. It's reduced numbers of it because <clears throat> there is everything, but I think... In the end, it averages out to more stats. I'm not sure exactly what the numbers on it are, but... It's the Elementalist preferred armor that yeah, they haven't had in well, game yet. It's kind of because Elementalists don't waste stats. You're always going to be using one of the stats. And it actually becomes more efficient if you want four stats or more. If you're only focusing on three stats, it's more efficient to get like a, a focus stat. But if you're going for four stats or more, Celestial is your best bet. And it's also one of my goals for my elementalist I don't play him that much but I use him to farm and so the magic find is nice and then I have something besides the berserker but that's beside the point to make a full set armor accessories and weapons you're going to spend 65 to 80 days not counting underwater weapons just putting the crystals together and now... that doesn't account for when the meta event goes away and you can only harvest your node once a day and get three so you can't even make one charged crystal per day unless you buy them. Hmm. So the question then would be, because it's tradable, will that make up for it? Since it's tradable and not everyone wants celestial stats. The quartz mm. is tradable. The charged quartz is account bound. You cannot trade those. Really? Really. 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 Yeah. <laughs> really so but, what do you think about that steve i mean that that's that's a bit weird i guess i i don't, I don't know that it'll apply to the things i play mm -hmm. i don't know just to me it's an insane and unreasonable time gating towards something that doesn't need yeah. so much time gating every other exotic set you can get when you have the resources and how long it takes you depends on, you know, how you gather the resources, whether it's dungeons or just gold farming, whatever you do, you can get that. Exo but this one stat set is time gated and it's not even like a month of investment. It's a really long time where you would have to be doing it every day. It doesn't make sense to me yeah. why you would do such a uh, just uh, and why, It frustrated. makes me wonder what they're trying to achieve by yeah. doing that. What is that? And on top of that, it's not going to be a very popular stat set. Right? Yeah. Compared it's, to what already exists. It's pretty much specifically a uh, Ellie stat, stat, I think. Are there any other classes that want that? Maybe maybe Rangers. Maybe. I guess. A guardian? Guardians is one of the ones I have seen use it. Um, I actually saw a discussion on the forums about thieves using it, but I wouldn't put it on a thief. Well, but you, <laughs> you put gear on a thief, and it's like lighting gear on fire, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I'm it's insulting like thieves again. It's like throwing it's your gear away. Anything. I'm just going to wear this money. <laughs> it's so nice. Nice. Anyways, money. So... Okay, that that is weird, especially since... Do you think it's because after the event is over, the only people with access to it are going to be those that can harvest it from their, pers from their home instance? Because the zone is going away. Do you think that's why they're time-gating it? To keep the supply high of the quartz, cr quartz shards or quartz crystals so that the charged quartz crystal don't radically inflate in price i have no idea i don't understand I mean, why they would do the this people that want to get celestial armor are gonna get as much as they can during the event obviously and then they're just gonna either well, buy the celestial armor from other people that are just using this to make money yeah that can be a thing and they're not really, I mean, I wouldn't buy it from other players. 
if I still had that time gate of I can only make one a day. Yeah. yeah. That is that is weird. It'll be so. Yeah. That's odd. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that. I'm confused by that decision. Mm-hmm. Well, let's move on to some lore discussion. There is uh, there is quite a bit of lore, apparently. Some new lore that's uh, that's come out. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Zephyrite spirit? They are the people who live on the Zeph Sanctum, which is the giant airship docked at the Labyrinthine Cliffs right now. Where are the Labyrinthine Cliffs, cliffs by the way? To the directions east of Mount Maelstrom. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's no zone bordering it, wait, actually. Wait, it's east of Mount Maelstrom? So if I'm looking at the map, I go right. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought there's about like it nothing it. above it at all. No, there's there's no zone bordering it's it. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. It's west. It's east. No east. Wait. He's he's making fun of me and my directional impairment. I I actually had to hold up the okay L is bro. So yeah, I'm kind of bad at it too. <laughs> So these are the cliffs where the Goblin King has his summer home. Yes. That was a really? that was a that was a labyrinth joke. Sorry. Uh, uh, Just listen for the sound of oh. David Bowie singing. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> follow the voice. I would be so happy if that happened. <laughs> David Bowie out of nowhere. You're like, oh my goodness, the hair. It's like a random event. He just spawns and. Like... <laughs> Twirls Kidnaps those crystal children. balls at you. Yeah. <laughs> and wears tight pants. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would be terrifying. Would, would he be a world boss, or would he be like the NPC that you're supposed to like escort? No, he'd be a world boss. Definitely. No, no, we escort him to Krathoric, and he sings the dragon to sleep, and that's how we solve that problem. Yeah. I'm okay with this. Baby that would be still better than Zyphon fight. <laughs> it's still better. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an escort quest. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that Zaitan fight. Have you done that, Steve? Uh, no, actually, I've not completed my personal story. Have you ever Sorry. pressed two before? Huh? Have you ever pressed two on the keyboard? <laughs> uh, a couple times. Do that for five minutes straight. Awesome. You're all set. The actual leading up to it is pretty awesome, though. So I would say it's worth it. Yeah, it's actually. I was. Act honestly thinking about that today uh i was reading um reading the sea of sorrows book and thinking you know i still have not completed my personal story i should probably go back and do that have you made it past clar island yet yeah i got past that and i think not too much further than that though no well you'll have to work your way through that yeah all right, so apparently there is a lament for Glint. Uh, in that's the, what I'm, uh, you're yeah, thinking. That's what I'm choosing to call it. If you loiter on the Zephyr Sanctum long enough, you'll notice that the residents are humming along with the melody in the zone, and they'll sing about losing Glint. How does Glint relate to the Zephyrites? She actually founded their society i guess she called the dwarves together this is what we know from talking to the npcs on the zephyr sanctum she called the dwarves together and it had them found a sanctuary and over time the humans were invited in and eventually took over guardianship of the heritage and then they built the zephyr sanctum and departed for the skies and spent hundreds of years honing air magic and that's how we have the spells that like the energy crystals is there one called Aang? Not yet. <laughs> but they so do have names. They have like cool one word names like we need Summer to... and Fade and So someone needs to roll an elementalist named Aang and just run around on the Zephyr Island. Just because. Maybe have like a group of elementalists. There probably already is one. You, you know that it's already taken. Uh, yeah. yeah, no. Yeah. Although apparently Revan somehow, one of our guildies, managed to get like all of the characters from KOTOR. Every wow. single one. 
Like, he got Bastila Sean, he got Revan, he got... I think he's got all, a lot of them. I've saw those two so far, and those are two of the two characters I've seen, which is rather impressive. And yes, Airbender reference. What server are you guys on? We are on Northern, Northern Shiver Peaks. It is a fantastically tiny server, and we enjoy our small community. It's our home. It is. What server it's, are you on, Steve? Cozy. Uh, I'm on Sanctum of Roll. Oh, the server where everyone is. <laughs> yeah. We are on the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, we are there's, the tiny server. There's a couple people on there. Just a few. There's queues every Friday night to get into WV Dub. Nice. Yeah, I, I was thinking okay. of actually transferring over at some point with my alt account just to uh, run some stuff with Indo, who we had, had on the show a few weeks ago. I think uh, that'd probably be fun. He uh he seems to have his stuff together when it comes to uh dub v dub. Yes. <laughs> I should do more of it. Uh I've been I had played some uh PvP for the first time a couple weeks ago and uh, never left the uh the mists for probably the whole week. So Nice. Wow. What class were you playing on? Profession, uh, sorry. First First, I was uh, doing the Ranger. Uh, then, I, what actually sold me on playing the Mesmer more is that I switched over to play the Mesmer to see how it went. And with all the skills unlocked, uh, got a better taste of it, and then went back and started uh, playing the Mesmer more. So nice. What kind of build do you run in uh, PvP with the Mesmer? Uh, the Great Sword. And I can't remember what the other two weapons are. Uh, sword and something. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, it, I, I was like, I think I literally went to Reddit and looked up Mesmer builds for PvP, found one and said, okay, I'll try that. Nice. Do you shatter a lot? No. no you probably have a no, the Phantasm build. Yes? That might be it. I'd have to look it up again. Nice. I'm a horrible player. <laughs> well, you can always join Eevee. Eevee is slowly getting groups together to figure out how to do it. I know we've, our uh, Relics has been doing a lot of PvP of late. I log yeah. into our Mumble server and like everyone's in the PvP and I log in and they're all just yelling at each other about, Oh my goodness, they're taking the clock tower! Stay on the point. Why is this blowing up? <laughs> I was about to say, why didn't you stay there? <laughs> that, that, that is this is a thing. <laughs> Go there, stay here. And if you didn't, if you stayed there, then why didn't you come help? Although actually, they they do just seem we seem pretty organized. Actually, I think we might actually be competent PVPers. Although I haven't, I need to start spectating some matches if I can. You you need to spectate and be like armchair commander. <laughs> That's cheating. First of all. Now, I would not mind, it's like... in the game. Yes. <laughs> the spirit of fairness. And no, it's it's a, ta it's a tactic. Oh, my goodness. So, okay, back on topic. The ship that the, guy, the Zephyrites are in is made out of bamboo? Yes. How did... Almost what? entirely. Why? I don't know. Where did it come Cause, from? Because tropical areas. Why not? I Aren't guess. they afraid of sea pandas? <laughs> <laughs> sky no, the worst thing is the sky pandas. <laughs> just have you heard about a drop bear? Yeah. A sky panda is the drop bear of the sky. Yeah. It's the Asian drop bear. <laughs> but it flies instead of just hanging in trees. Are you familiar with drop bears, Evie? You look a little confused. A drop bear is the deadliest animal in the world. The reason why you don't know about them is because anyone who has seen one is dead. Also, you cannot photograph them because they hate cameras and they will go to any length to kill you and destroy your camera if you're trying to be fo if you're trying to photograph them. Okay. okay then. So there you go. So, so always Is that like Alaska's version of the boogeyman? It's actually from uh, bear, like it's from Australia. Oh, I see. <laughs> drop bears. They kill. Stay so, <laughs> the day you learned, and that wasn't even the wheel of morality. Oops. So it's made out of bamboo. That's crazy. Um, what about the crystals? Where are these crystals coming from? You you had some interesting theories about that. 
actually i don't know they did say that the elemental powers that the zephyrites have are the result of honing air magic for hundreds of years but as i mentioned on a previous show i think they said that this this chapter could kind of change how we relate to elementals for the rest of the game so i have yet to see how that's been impacted. I was kind of wondering more if you guys knew, but if you guys haven't had a chance to experience the content yet, then... Tune in Element. next week! <laughs> <laughs> that elementals seem... will be more like a second cousin. I guess. That'd be or cool like... if we could, like, kill them and they drop crystals, and then we have abilities in those or areas. Or maybe, maybe the meta event, when we get the actual crystal node, what will happen is there will be a group of elementals that hang out in our... Uh, in our... Home oh, instance, instance, and that's like shavings. It's like pixie dust that they just leave behind. You know, pixies, it streams off of their wings, or it's like elemental waste. Like. Wait, lodestones are elemental poop? Yeah. I was about to say. Oh, <laughs> what am I gathering? <laughs> I need 100 charged elemental poops. <laughs> and, so the, and so the quartz crystals is just flakes off of it. It's like dandruff from an earth elemental. A high-level earth elemental. Or maybe a flowstone elemental, if you remember those guys. I have a lore question for you that's related to Sea of Sorrows and spoilers. I'll ask you after the show. Okay. But it reminded me. I'll be able to answer it because I'm brilliant. Also, Chaz is sad that I'm not talking at him because I'm in the middle of a show. Poor Chaz. He doesn't realize that we're doing a show. But that's okay. He'll work through it. Mm-hmm. So, what else, what other interesting things about the Zephyrite have you come across? Near the back of the ship, there's a Zephyrite teacher talking to a group of children, and they debate whether the dragons are evil or not, which is a really interesting conversation. Which should also be tied into the amazing thing that Wooden Potatoes did, which suggests that the gods that are uh, gone are actually the dragons and that it's a cycle. Bum, bum, bum. Anyway. What were you going to say, Steve? <laughs> oh, nothing. I'm just scratching my, oh, my okay. uh, facial hair thinking about this whole thing. The um, They talk about how dragons are like the air, lightning, and sun or whatever, and how they can kill, but they're also forces of nature, which goes back to you know the dragons being related to each force of nature. And they also talk about um, the foundation of Destiny's Edge, and the kids are big fans of Air, which I thought was really cute and kind of interesting how they are apart from the world but are also involved with it because they know about Destiny's Edge and they are they know about things going on on the ground, and also the ship has been used as the meeting ground for treaties and stuff because it's a neutral territory. Hmm. So, so it's actually it. It's not like the people of Tyria didn't know about it. No, just we didn't know about it. Okay, and but apparently the Silvari also did not know about it. That's funny, though, because there's actually a scholar on the ship that's like, Oh my god, I'm on the Sanctum. So many scholars weren't sure this place actually existed, and I'm standing here. And apparent, But apparently it's not in the dream. Now, is that merely because the dream is not necessarily all-inclusive of knowledge that is gained by Silvari? I mean, not... Fork says the Pale Tree knew of it, but no Silvari had seen it yet. Ah, okay. That actually makes more sense. So it probably hasn't made landfall for 25, 30 years. Yeah. Perhaps. So, like, when the first Silvari goes on to the thing, like, the rest of them everywhere in Tyria go, Oh, cool! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I don't think so. I do know that, like, momentous events are downloaded directly into the tree, but a, but a Silvari that has already awoken from the dream into Tyria, I don't think it's downloaded all the new information. Like, they might feel that there's a momentous event that has occurred, and they might want to go back to the Pale Tree to learn about it, but they may not actually know directly. So do they go like, does this mean that, desert? like, every Silvari, like, down the generations, will just become increasingly more intelligent? Yes. Yeah. Well, is there like a hole is there like a hole in the pale tree that they can stick their thumb in? Is that like their thumb drive? Uh, they can, they can actually go down to the roots and commune with them. 
yeah. I believe. With their thumb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is the Safari thumb drive. That is fantastic. That's brilliant, Steve. I have should make an ad for that. You should. <laughs> oh. I don't think it'd be. I don't think it'd make any sense out of context of the show. <laughs> That's okay. I, I don't know. Like Silvari, like ad, making an ad specifically for the Silvari, the Silvari thumb drive. Why well, I, I did make an ad specifically for Silvari one time. It was uh, Miracle Glow. <laughs> I saw that. That's amazing. <laughs> Does it make them glow <laughs> yeah. better? Yeah. That's fantastic. I, my Silvari needs some Miracle Glow. So, I'm not... Uh, back on uh, back on Evie's thing, though, with the Silvari getting progressively more intelligent, uh, I don't think so, because each Silvari is given a certain amount of information from the Pale Tree. Like, they, I think they a Silvari is as intelligent as they can be at birth. Like, I don't think they can get smarter as a race. But they will yeah. get progressively more knowledgeable. Mm. So she chooses who's dumb. Yes. Oh. <laughs> She's like, and you shall be the special one. <laughs> You're my favorite. We need a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many dead rats in the lower parts of the so of the pale tree. You're a janitor. Congratulations. You have, the, you have all the possible knowledge of the universe about how to clean stains. Can you imagine how depressing that would be, like, going into, like, you know how the Silvari come in and your character goes through the dream and you're like, oh, there's this, these portents and I have, like, the Pale Tree telling me about these heroic things that I have to go do, and someone else just walks up, like, wait, is walking through the dream, and, like, the Pale Tree walks up and hands him a mop and bucket. <laughs> and they're like, you're good to go. Flip it in the dream for, like, two seconds. It doesn't matter, you're good. <laughs> oh. Poor janitor. But you know what? They probably care about their job a lot because they have to clean their mom. It's like, you know, when you're... Gross. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone to strange places with this episode. Welcome to Relics of Or. <laughs> so, okay, so that's pretty cool, actually, about the Silvari and everything. We also have had some interesting news over the past week. There's been rumors since Guild Wars 2 sort of came out and people have been talking about expansion packs that there will never be a Canton expansion pack. Uh, Spirit, Evie, Steve, are you, have you guys familiar with those rumors at all? Yeah. Did you guys know about whether or not that's accurate? Or I know that some stuff came out this week that sort of talked about that. Didn't somebody? It's pretty much uh, always just a rumor. Yeah, it's just yeah. rumor, but I could have swore I saw somebody else link to either like a tweet or somebody else from Arena that's saying that uh, just because, or maybe it was just someone else being speculative, that just because this team, the person from this team that said that about the Living Story updates doesn't mean that they don't have another group that would be working on an expansion. Yeah. Because there are multiple teams there working on stuff like that. So. Yeah. Well, Wasn't it about a guy that was interviewed and they, it was like a long time ago. Right. And he mentioned how they wouldn't do a Canton expansion because NC Soft wouldn't allow it because it was like melding too many Asian cultures together. But it's oh, cool if you do it with European cultures. No, we've already had that rant on the uh, Guild Mumble server. Uh, so it turns out that's not actually accurate, apparently. Oh, I don't know if it's. I, I don't know if there has been any uh, validity to it or not. Well, are we talking now? Are we talking the news about expansions so, not being a thing? No, no, no. About specifically, specifically about Cantha. Cantha. Specifically, Zar. Uh, how do you pronounce his name? Zar. Zar. Mike. Mike. Yeah, Zadarajni. Like Thank the, you. No, no, no. Canada. Yeah. So he specifically said during an interview. <laughs> he specifically said during an interview they po asked him point blank. Is that an issue? Is that going to prevent you from making Cantha? And he said, no, that is actually not any directive that they have ever received from a, from NCSoft. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that they could actually... There's no directive not to put Cantha in the game. So there is always a possibility of seeing Cantha. Now, since Cantha doesn't deal with our current Tyrion issues of dragons, we probably won't see it for a while. Unless if they're like, forget dragons, we're taking you to Cantha, and then you're going to meet Kunavang, and you're going to be like, oh, dragons aren't always evil? Now, cool. This is what needs to happen. Bubbles 
needs to go into the deep. He already is like, there. Right, we can't deal with these other dragons yet. But we've been to the deep. We know what's up there. So we oh, can go take deep. care of this dragon. Except for the fact because that the not? deep doesn't work anymore because it's all water. Uh, it's, oh, yeah, it's deep. Combat. Yay. <laughs> it's still better than pressing two. I would take underwater combat with the dragon and over taking away my skill bar and making me press two any day. Okay, I'll agree with that. Especially if you have to fly inside, swim inside of it, and then like you're like walking through it, and it's like bumping you up in the air and stuff, and you're like fighting your way to its heart. Didn't they say that Bubbles was the smallest of the dragons? I don't I think so. That. Um, but anyway, going back to getting to Cantha. Somebody pointed out to me today, actually, that I think it might have been Evie. Why do we have to worry about bubbles anymore? We can fly to Cantho. We have airships. Oh. So. Well. Wow. Yeah. There goes my dream of, like, the next 30 living story contents being just underwater combat. As we, like, swim to Cantha. It's called Swimming to Cantha. It's like that. That's like the entire. That's like the next year and a half of school, of uh, living story content planned. I, I have inside my inside and source, water. and it's called Swimming to Cantha. It's like Desert <laughs> Bus. It'll be a city. That's a sea lab. <laughs> yeah, that's like the center of. What we do you think the, of? The, what's it called? The, the wings and the the, the assassin type Largos. That would actually be kind of cool. City. If, or if they did, like, a full-on underwater-type thing. What do you think about underwater combat, Steve? Have you done much of it? Do you tend to avoid it, or are you sort of neutral? Um, I, as far as the abilities for my ranger, I, I don't mind it at all, but I've not had a lot of instances where I've had to. Uh, some stuff in ore forced me to. Um, I, I don't mind it when I have to do it. I, I, I think it's better than any underwater combat and any other MMO that I've played. So I can't really scoff at it. I, it could definitely be better, but but it's but we've seen it much better. worse in other games. Oh yeah, non <laughs> almost non-existent in yeah. other MMOs. Doing the same thing underwater that you would do above the water. Uh, just the change of having a complete different skill set and weapons for underwater combat is um, I, I I still love that idea. The only thing that I would improve on is give my ranger guns on land if you're going to give him a gun underwater. That would be uh, well, fantastic. The thing is, spear gun doesn't actually use gunpowder, I think. The what harpoon? Does it, what does it use? Like, levers? Yes. <laughs> it's mechanical. Extreme levers. <laughs> it's got this giant spring in the back. It's just this huge torsion spring that's just, like, massive. And you just start... <laughs> I mean, considering the technology of the time, waterproof gunpowder wouldn't be a thing unless it's magical. It could be a... Uh... Of course it's magical. It's like the uh, Star Wars excuse for anything. It's a force. It's a force. <laughs> it was Sith alchemy! That's how they created the evil supercharged Rancor. Yes. Yep. Compressed air. Oh, okay, I can see that too. And obviously, when you shoot out like a piece of coral that grows, yeah, magic, as the hunt, as the rangers do. Speaking of which, I haven't actually. What do you guys think of the new weapon skins that have come out with, uh, with the new content? The zenith ones. Yeah. Why don't I have one already? I'm going to have one of all of them, please. Okay, thank you. Can you do that? No. You get to pick one per so much, like, they're tied to achie achievement test, uh, words, achievement chests, and at a thousand points is your first one. We're getting them retroactively, and each day we'll get another one. So tomorrow will be our first chance at oh, getting this one. Yeah. And you have a choice between, like, five or six with, with each chest. For tomorrow, it will be the longbow, shortbow, greatsword, staff, and hammer. Okay, so how does that work exactly? Like, how, Where do you go to get them? What happens? It completely works through the UI. Yep. Okay. Completely. And so, the skins are like HOM skins. Once you've unlocked them, you can make copies and put it on top of any weapon that you have. Now, also, how many of them can you have? 
like can you put them on any characters like if you got if you or do you get one great sword skin no you get as many skins as you want it's just like HOM. so so if you hit 10 or if you hit like 12,000 points you could conceivably have access to all of them yeah yeah that's fantastic well, I guess it depends on how many chests allow you to have them in between but we know of at least two i think in the first 2500 am i wrong yeah. yeah so you'll have two chances to get them in the first 2500 and then beyond that and then 3000 is the Wait, new gloves you have a chance to get them well you no, no you're guaranteed to get them but those oh, okay. like those chests are your opportunity to get them i don't know how you would say that without saying chance yeah it's uh -huh. a guaranteed chance but it's still okay. like because you're not getting all of them in one thing it's like a chance at this one or a chance at that one yeah the shield looks amazing by the way yes they, they remind me of the mersat well. weapons from guild wars one oh, that's a good point prettier but they're prettier yeah so they're like blue and glowy and yellow they're the, like the first thing that comes to my head is the prophecies mission to ascend oh when i see those that's a good point. Why is that? Because of like Crystals. the crystal that the ascension thing does, and then like the lightning that hits the rock, augury rock. Oh. And it's all floaty and just like. So do you think that that this could have been built from those? Oh, Particularly interesting. That crystal, yeah. Lightning as well shattered the crystals and infused it with magic. These are Zephyr from air, from air magic. Yeah, interesting. And Zenith, I don't know if that's what the weapons are called. And it means an imaginary point directly above a particular location. Hmm. Particularly in, in reference mostly to a celestial sphere. Sphere. Cool. And also, also a television manufacturer in the 1980s. Hmm? Today I learned. <laughs> also a television manufacturer in the 1980s. If you guys would like to go and see the uh, what I'm showing online, uh, what I'm showing on the stream right now, you can head to Dolphy.net. It is a fantastic website, Guild Wars resource. Uh, it's where I go for a lot of like my patch, my batch guides and stuff. Also, you can buy World of Warcraft. It is now free up to level 20, apparently, according to this ad. I'm not quite sure. Yep, there you go. I'm probably going to get banned on YouTube for advertising that. Anyways, very cool. I'm looking forward to messing with those and seeing what what sorts of uh, weapons I can get and picking one. I look so, forward to having the weapons on my lobbies that are getting more experience now because I have achievements. So we're moving right along. Actually, let's go ahead and move on to the next section. We have some pro tips from Cole. So... I'm going to play a little bit of Cole's video that he just did, and it tells you how to do the not-so-secret jumping puzzle, or actually how Mesmers should help everyone else out. So it's kind of like a PSA. Hey guys, welcome to another video uh, from Relics of War. My name is Cole, and uh, this video is going to be all about how to make friends in the new jumping puzzle with the Sky Pirates uh, patch that just came out. Hey, look at this. Right behind the waypoint you're supposed to go to, that waypoint makes it look like it says FFS. You know what that stands for? Let's move on. Uh, the waypoint you want to go to, so here's Lion's Arch. It's right there in Gendarin Fields. Not too hard to get to. So you'll go there. And uh, I'm not going to be too thorough on how to get up the jumping puzzle. Dolphy has a lot of videos on that kind of stuff. If I have nothing to say, and I'm ascending the jumping puzzle or whatever, you'll see random bits where I speed up the process. Alright, so here's... we've got some locations here now. 
right here is what I call the ground level under the front of the ship. That's how people typically refer to it. <laughs> we could use some terminology that's a little more concise. Like, I have concise terminology for this part here, which is actually uh, something I'm going to refer to more often. Because up here, people tend to struggle on these bars a lot, getting up. So uh, when I drop a portal like that one over there, I usually do it up here. I'm going to go help this guy real quick. Anyway, so that area up there I call the monkey bars. Uh, if, as a kid, you spent a lot of time on monkey bars, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the monkey bars. Right here. This is a position where you're going to want to drop portals, in my opinion, because people tend to be here, they see that you dropped it, and they get the boost. Where you're porting them to is the next question, and I'll show you here in a sec. Now this location is oftentimes where people will drop portals and think they're being pretty helpful. The problem is, on top of the ship, up, up there, the top of the ship, that's where people typically want to be, because that's the diverging point between the goggles for the achievement and the chest for the exotic. So they get their choice if they get portaled up there. If you drop a portal here and bring them up to this ship, they might uh, be expecting someone else's portal. They'll come here and be like, crap, and they have to go back down, which isn't terrible, but why create confusion? Especially with the newbies, they get pretty confused. So. We're going to move on. We're going to get to the top level of the ship. Uh, no. Alright, so here we are on top of this tube, just after those pedestals over there. And, um, so this is where Portal is going to be really handy. It creates a safety net for you. But, it doubles. If you're successful, then you can help people like this guy chill in here. If they fall. Oh, he already fell. Anyway, people that are coming up this over here and they get to where my portal is stand to benefit from the portal if I get pretty high, so I'm going to do this right now. I should probably unmute myself for when I talk. But that's okay, I have a portal. Okay, I made it. So now, if I can get going fast enough... I like to do one jump just to be sure I know where the next platform is going to be. Also, my gameplay is a little jittery, so I'm not quite as smooth. Not that I'm super smooth anyway, but you know. See? Now I'll put this here. Maybe someone will benefit. Maybe not. We'll see. But I don't have to stay here. Look fun, though. It is a pretty fantastic jumping puzzle, actually. I like... Uh, it's... With the, with the pads and everything, it's almost... All right. At this point, you got a choice. Mad King level. You can either start yeah, going up to go to the dogs, which I will do later. Clock tower. First, I'm going to show you how to be helpful pace. to people at That's that true. diverging point I was talking about, where they have their options. So let's get over there. I'm just going to set on fire. That's cool. You're going to have to kick some ass for a second. This one almost looks more like a big puzzle. Yeah, that's true, and it's le it definitely has a lot less of the issues as far as just a lot of no, it's not as time sensitive obviously right so Evie that's how you clear the top so to help people at the monkey bars as I described this is the best place uh, some people like to port down here or start their port down here I don't because that creates awkward footing for people when they first show up in fact this spots awkward enough but it buys you a little more time to be that low so we're going to drop our portal. Now, notice I'm stifling my fall as best I can with the different uh, lips and edges on the terrain. I'm going to come up here. There's actually nobody at the monkey bars right now other than one. That's okay. You can come down here. you got a little time. You can look around and see where you're most likely to get people that want this. Let me just drop it. No one's going to take it. And there you go. That is the first half of it. You can also do jumping puzzles. Uh, you can also portal up to the uh, up to the final part, but you can figure that out by 
by playing it yourself. Maha! So there is our pro tip for the day for how Mesmers can take care of other players. And I think that we are out of time again for Armchair Developer, which someday will happen. We will talk about thieves and why they are interesting and where they can go with them. But I'm going to finish off with, is there anything else you guys would, would like to talk about? Steve, anything, any topics that we glossed over that you'd like to? I really would like to talk about thieves and how they could be better. <laughs> well, let's see. We've got an entire <laughs> evening. So, Actually, moving. That's the only class that I've 